Have you ever come across the classic 1953 Western film about a spirited woman navigating the Wild West? Filled with laughter, surprises, and heartwarming moments, this movie introduces a diverse cast of characters. There's a brave and adventurous lead, always ready to face challenges, a sharpshooter with a quick wit and a heart of gold, and a sweet, kind-hearted woman who adds warmth to every scene. Who was your favorite character among them? Was it the fearless spirit of the lead, the charming personality of the sharpshooter, or someone else entirely? Share your thoughts below. And speaking of your thoughts, we'd love to hear your memorable moments or personal experiences related to this film. Whether it's a funny story, a surprising revelation, or a touching moment that left an impact, don't hesitate to share. Your stories are valuable to us. Stay tuned for more interesting facts about this classic movie. You won't want to miss it. In a lively western film set against the backdrop of the rugged frontier, a spirited cowgirl finds herself forming an unlikely bond with another character. Together, they navigate through adventures that challenge societal norms, particularly gender roles of the era. The lead actress captures the essence of a woman breaking free from expectations, with her chemistry alongside a rugged cowboy adding charm to the story. Memorable musical sequences, including well-known songs like Secret Love, showcase the vocal talents of the actress and the charismatic presence of her co-star. Each song enhances the storytelling, making it a delightful experience for fans of musicals. More than just a western, this film celebrates themes of love, friendship, and self-discovery. As we honor the late actress, her performance in this timeless classic serves as a reminder of her impact on Hollywood. Whether you're a fan of musicals or simply enjoy a heartwarming romance, this movie is a must-watch. In the realm of film, a notable soundtrack emerged in 1953. An album featured selections from the Sammy Fain Paul Francis Webster score, comprising four songs from the movie's soundtrack. Additionally, four tunes were commercially re-recorded solely by Doris Day. The original LP has since been transferred to CD format. In 1995, J Records recreated the entire film score, incorporating five numbers from a later stage production. During early 1954, music from this film dominated Billboard. The number one single was Doris Day's rendition of Secret Love, an Oscar-winning ballad by Sammy Fain and Paul Francis Webster. A 10-inch LP featuring Day and Howard Keel's songs secured second place among popular albums. Notably, Robert Fuller, formerly known as Buddy Lee, and Robert Simpson Jr. legally adopted the name Robert Fuller due to family ties on his mother's side. Doris Day's portrayal in the movie became a reference point for Jesse's character in the Toy Story franchise. At the Fort Scully dance, an uncredited Brad Johnson was the first officer to notice Calamity Jane's transformation. Interestingly, the following year, Johnson took on the role of the love interest in a TV series featuring another notable frontierswoman, Annie Oakley. Doris Day and Mary Wicks shared the screen in four films together, including on Moonlight Bay, I'll See You in My Dreams, By the Light of the Silvery Moon, and It Happened to Jane. Wicks also made a guest appearance on the first season of Day's TV show, The Doris Day Show. Doris Day's performance in the 1953 movie left a lasting impact on audiences. She starred in a film where she portrayed a character with undeniable charisma and a blend of strength and vulnerability. Throughout the story, there's a hint of romance between the tough guy Bill Hickok and the spirited protagonist. Day's portrayal captivated viewers with her versatility as an actress and her impressive singing talent. Following the passing of one of her co-stars in 2018, Day became the sole survivor until her own demise in 2019 at the age of 97. Her work in the film continues to enchant audiences, reminding us of the timeless charm of classic Hollywood cinema. This enduring affection for her performance ensures that she will always be remembered for her impactful contribution to entertainment. In the movie, the inside of the saloon was designed by Harper Goff. He also worked on Disneyland's Golden Horseshoe Saloon, which is why they look alike. Gene Nelson was supposed to be one of the main guys which got people excited, but things changed. The final cast turned out great, making history in movies. Doris Day really liked this movie. She acted in 39 movies, but this one was special to her. She played a tough woman in the Wild West and people loved it. It made her even more famous. The movie Calamity Jane is still remembered today because of its cast and crew. It shows how good storytelling and movies can stay popular for a long time. So, when you watch old western movies, think about the people who made them special. In the real life of Calamity Jane, she engaged in prostitution at times, a detail not depicted in the movie. Her romantic involvement with Hickok remains uncertain, as he never mentioned her in his letters, nor did his brother Alonzo. 
Warner Brothers decided to create a movie featuring Calamity Jane after failing to acquire the rights to Anna Get Your Gun for Doris Day. Interestingly, they cast Howard Keel, who had starred in the film version of Annie Get Your Gun. Eventually, Warner gained the rights to Annie Get Your Gun in 1996, long after his initial attempt. Doris Day's recording of Secret Love occurred in a single take, showcasing her talent and efficiency in the studio. In the movie, Hollywood star Joel McCrea allowed Doris Day to ride his horse dollar. Day's recording of the popular song Secret Love dominated the pop charts, but she opted out of singing it at the 1954 Academy Awards. Instead, it was performed by Anne Blythe and the song One Best Song. Doris Day's performance in the title role, Tomboyish and Charming, was her personal favorite among the 39 films she made in her career. It showcased her boisterous and utterly charming persona. In 1953, a notable song titled The Deadwood Stage featured the lyric, will be home tonight by the light of the silvery moon. Coincidentally, that same year saw Doris Day starring in a film called By the Light of the Silvery Moon. Calamity Jane, the 1953 movie, gained a robust LGBT following, particularly for the chemistry between Calamity and Katie. This dynamic gave an alternative meaning to the film's best-known song, the Oscar-winning Secret Love. To portray the rough and ready character of Calamity, Doris Day had to lower the sound of her natural voice, adopting a gruffer tone. This alteration was necessary for her convincing portrayal of the rugged calamity. In summary, 1953 marked the release of a film that not only showcased Doris Day's versatility, but also inadvertently attracted a strong LGBT following. The unconventional chemistry between Calamity and Katie breathed new life into the film, giving unexpected depth to its most iconic song. Day's dedication to the role went beyond acting, requiring her to modify her natural voice to embody the character's rough persona. In casting the male lead, the film's production team chose Howard Keel, known for his role alongside Betty Hutton in a prior MGM film. This choice was seen as compensation to Doris Day, a leading star, for missing out on the movie rights to another film. Interestingly, the set of Deadwood City's Golden Garter Saloon was repurposed in another Warner picture of the same year. It was transformed into the 14th Street Music Hall for a sequence involving Ken Kid dancers. Moreover, the song Secret Love from the movie earned a nomination on the American Film Institute's list of greatest music and films. It seems that despite the challenges, the film found its place among notable works in American cinema. Before gaining fame as an actor, Robert Fuller showed off his dancing skills on screen with stars like Jane Russell and Marilyn Monroe. These early roles paved the way for his successful career. One memorable musical moment in his movies is the song Secret Love, which has stood the test of time. Years later, Mandy Moore sang a beautiful version of the same song in the film Mona Lisa Smile, giving it a fresh appeal. Moving on to westerns, the streets used as Deadwood City in Fuller's films have a rich history. They were once the battlegrounds of war-torn Atlanta and the famous movie Gone with the Wind, leaving a lasting impression on Hollywood. These same streets were also seen in many Warner Brothers westerns, showing their versatility in storytelling. These connections in Hollywood's past reveal intriguing stories about each location. Deadwood City has seen tales of love, conflict, and triumph unfold on its streets. As we look back on the era of film, we see how genres and generations are intertwined. 